No, you'll always be persistent once you set your goal and make sure that your goal is going to have a constructive effect. So you're not a person, no creature is supposed to be persistent in doing something that doesn't make sense. I mean, that's that you get worse and worse. No, you be persistent, first of all, before you make any move. You find out what it is that you are trying to do that's going to produce the most constructive result. Before you make any move, you ask yourself, is this going to produce a constructive result? This thing that I'm trying to do, this thing that I'm looking forward to doing, like we started off this conversation talking about being a gang member, is this going to have a constructive result? Constructive result for whom? Or is it going to have a non-constructive result? Non-constructive for whom? Is anybody going to lose? Is anybody going to be mistreated in me being a gang member? Is uh, Because codification, period, of any kind, should never be about mistreating anybody, period. If you're part of anything that has to do with any any morsel, any any small segment of mistreating somebody, that's null and void right out of the gate. I mean, that should be squashed. I mean, no mercy should be given for that. None. Zero. No consideration. No, your honor, uh, you know, well, uh, you know, I, you know, uh, no, 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 no. You get what you put out. And the code covers that as far as particularly if it includes something like killing people unjustly. I mean, I hope I'm not digressing from or distracting from what this question is all about, but I'm talking about constructive and non-constructive. Everything in the universe is going to have that effect, one or the other. There's no such thing as in between. So... If you kill somebody, for instance, willfully, deliberately, and unjustly, I'm not talking about self-defense. I'm talking about just killing. It's in the code book. There's a thing called compensatory, maximum emergency compensatory, solitary confinement. Say, for instance, if I kill someone, deliberately and willfully and unjustly, in other words, with mal intent. I intend to mistreat this person. I'm mistreating this person by killing this person. You know, if you're doing it in self-defense, that's not mistreatment. But if I willfully and deliberately go out and hunt somebody down and kill them for my convenience, because this is what I want to do, to prove that I'm this, that, and the other and whatnot for glory, for money or for something like that, oh, okay. But you get, you should get exactly what you put out, and you should get it from whom? Not from somebody else. You should, according to the laws of justice, get it from whom? If I kill somebody, Neely Fuller, willfully, deliberately, unjustly, in other words, mistreatment, and I think this is funny, when I am caught, I shouldn't be killed by somebody else. You know who should do the killing? Neely Fuller. And I should be given every convenience for doing so, like being put in a solitary compensatory, maximum emergency, solitary confinement. And I sit there with that gun that I use to kill that other person, and my friend is that gun. I have this in the code book. If I'm using a gun, whatever the weapon is, preferably a gun. Because that's more, quote, unquote, humane, if you can say that. But that's the gun that I use, the one similar to it. And that's the only thing in that cell with me. And there's no no conversation, no arguing with guards. Because once that door slams, it never opens until I come out after I have done what I should do, and that is just what I did to that other person, I should do it to myself. And I don't come out of there until I do it. Of course,
because I come out horizontal. And how did they know that I'm dead in there? It's because they give me one meal a day. Anytime that tray doesn't come back out of that slot, you don't get no more food. So you got a choice. You can sit in there and starve to death, or you can blow your brains out like you did that other person. But that's your friend. Mm -hmm. You have proven that in that cell with you, that's what that was your partner in business because killing people is a business. So you go to jail with your partner. If they can find the gun that you use, that's the gun that you go in there with, and it's got one bullet in the chamber. So you bet not miss yourself when you get ready to do yourself in, because you're not coming out of there until you do it. Yes. That should be universal. That should apply so that people don't go into court and arguing back and forth about all these different technicalities. Yes, sir. Once they prove that you committed what they call first-degree murder, I don't care who you are, anywhere on the planet, you know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You are going to be put in a situation where, and or you can, you know, you can die of old age in there, but you don't have any music, you don't have any magazines, you don't have any anything. You sit there and look at your good buddy, which is that nine millimeter pistol, if that's what you use. You just sit there and talk to it, cuddle it, make love to it, anything you want to do with it. Because that's the only thing in that cell with you. Not a magazine, not a TV set, not nothing. And like I said, you don't come out of there until you and your buddy make a contract with each other, just like you made a contract on that person that you got rid of. There's no better concept of imprisonment for first-degree murder than that, in my opinion. In your and that opinion. should be universal. That should be the law all over the planet. No exceptions. Mm -hmm. Period. I wow. mean, this foolishness of running around thinking that it's funny to kill somebody, that's got to stop. The white supremacists have glamorized this. They sure and have. that's one of the main things that black people should be saying in one voice. Oh, no. No. You kill somebody. Have fun. Kill yourself. <laughs> All right. Ain't nothing better than that.